Hey guys, today we're going to be working with servos. Servos are fun because they actually bring physical dimension to your projects. Uh, and servos in particular are good because they are cheap. They have the motor control circuitry built right in. So all you have to do is apply a voltage and a control line to the microcontroller. Uh, they've got a lot of torque. They can really do a lot of work in a small package. If you ever have a servo powered and trying to turn, you try and stop it. You can't you usually, you know, if it's any kind of uh, size to the servo at all, you usually can't stop it with your fingers. It's uh, they're very strong. Um, but they're they're really good. The only limitations you're going to have really with a servo is, you know, from the factory, they only rotate 180 degrees. Because they were, you know, traditionally made just to steer wheels, um, you know, turn a rudder, or uh, you know, maybe move some flaps on an airplane, something like that. So they do have that limitation; they can only go 180 degrees. But you can set what you know which degree you want. So that that is kind of a good thing because you do have control, uh, and also you do have the capability, if you like, of modifying a servo like this one for continuous rotation that I've done and then you can actually use it as a, just a gear motor uh, of course it's a very torquey low speed gear motor but it, it is a gear motor and you know the you don't have to use a motor driver or anything like that you just gotta give it some voltage and go uh, let's go ahead and see how we hook this thing up okay let's take a look at a servo and we'll talk real quick about the cabling on the servo this is a high-tech HS322 HD servo it's a little bit smaller uh, I'll remember how many grams of torque it has it's not super torquey but we have most servos you're gonna have three leads coming off just like this one the yellow is going to be the control lead where you tell uh, you know that's where you send the signal from the microcontroller what position the servo needs to be in the red lead is going to be hot and the ground is going to be the ground now um, if you do power the servo from a separate source from your microcontroller which you'll find is usually going to be the case don't forget the grounds have to all be tied together so this ground if you're powering from a battery pack that ground is going to have to be tied in somewhere to the same ground that you use to power the microcontroller with. Uh, we'll look at another servo here. This is a cheaper servo, but way torqueier servo. MG995 Tower Pro. They're like five bucks a piece, I think. And you'll see the color scheme is a little bit different here. The ground is brown. The hot is this weird looking reddish oranges color and then the signal line is actually orange so that is a little different and let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino board here and the cool thing about servos is it doesn't really matter which pin we connect to any of them will work fine it does not have to be a PWM pin if you're going to power your servo from the Arduino 5 volt power then you really need to be plugged in to the barrel connector with 7 to 20 volts on the Arduino. Uh, because if you are powering the Arduino with the computer's USB port, the Arduino is not going to be able to provide the power. Even though the USB port can theoretically provide the power, the Arduino is just not set up as far as the voltage regulator is concerned to power uh, this type of load. You know when using USB now when you're using the uh, wall wart going through the barrel connector on a traditional Arduino or if you're using the voltage in on the nano then yeah you can go ahead and you know power up a reasonably sized servo from that otherwise you'll have to use a battery pack but I'm gonna show you how to do that today and we're gonna go ahead and use for this servo I'm gonna go ahead and pop in four batteries in series to this battery pack and that's going to give us close to six volts not quite 
Matter of fact, we'll just take a look. I think these cells run about 1.4 a piece, something like that. But servos can, servos typically can run from 3 to 7 volts. Hello, I must have a power switch here or something. There we go. have a wonky lead there or something. Okay, uh, 5.88 volts. All right, so we'll just call it six volts. So this is gonna be the power supply for the servos. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and connect this power right. And we'll go ahead and connect it on the power lead here. So if you remember from a previous video, We'll have six volts on this whole power lead. All these power uh, pins right here, we're gonna have six volts. So that is all set. And as I mentioned, we will need to have the ground be common. So I will go ahead and tie this ground. I'll put it here just to be nice and messy. And we're just gonna go from ground there, and I'll zoom in a little more, just in case you want to see it. Okay, we're going to go, we're going to tie the ground here to the ground here. All right. And then we're going to look at the connections on the servo itself. Okay. And to connect these. Little, these little connectors, I just put little male jumpers into the end and then I can connect directly to the breadboard. That makes it pretty easy. Okay, so we have our ground here that we can just tie right here anywhere. Okay, then we've got our hot right here that's going to go to 6 volts. Then we've got our signal right here. So that signal can go anywhere we like. Let's go to number 9. Okay, so that is the setup. Pretty simple. We've got a 6 volt battery pack powering this power rail here. We've got this power rail tied into the Arduino ground right here and then we've got the servo ground power and signal connections here uh, and that is it so let's see I said we were on number nine there we go let's take a look now at the Arduino programming All right, here we are on the computer. And I'll go ahead and open up the Arduino. And let's open up the example sketch, because that'll kind of show how things work here without me having to do a lot of typing, which I'm not a big fan of. All right, now here's a standard servo type program. This this program is made to just sweep back and forth with the servo. And you see up top here, you have to include the servo library, which is servo.h. And that library is installed by default on your Arduino installation. Okay, and this is common and very well, of course. Servo, my servo, create a servo object. Okay, and you could call this servo anything you want. We'll call this one, um, I'll call it Lonnie, because that's my name. Okay, variable to store the servo position. Okay, my servo, so we're going to do Lonnie 
attach, oh it's already on 9, so that's where we're actually attached to. Uh, that's just telling the Arduino that I have a servo named Lonnie on pin 9. Okay, And you could tell to, to really to write a position to the servo, you just have to do servo.write position. And that's, that position is going to be anywhere between 0 and 180. We'll simplify this. Um, we'll do Lonnie dot right and we'll do a 180 then we'll do a delay uh, we better give it two seconds and then Lonnie dot right zero delay okay I think we are good now I just need to connect the cable Okay, checking the settings out, look good there, and let's upload the code, see if this thing will go. Now it should go from 0 to 180, which will be all the way one direction, all the way to the other direction. And it looks like we have an issue already. Ah, and the issue appears to be my horrible eyesight because it looks like I've actually attached it to 8. So rather than move the jumper, I'll just change the code. Now we should see the servo horn go from 0 to 180. Man, we're seeing a lot of jitter here. There are different things that can cause servo jitter. Some servos can't make it all the way to 180 or all the way to zero. Let's change to 10 and 170. See what that does. Doesn't really do anything. Okay. Some servos are just jittery in general. Let's try, just as an example, we'll try one of these other servos. We can also see how torquey these suckers can get. I'll just let it continue to run. Let's see, that was there, there, there. I think this ought to do it. There we go. And we're not getting the jitters here. Interesting. And just to, I'm trying, I cannot stop. These servos are so, so strong. I'm trying to stop it with my fingers. I can't do it. It, it, it actually hurts my fingers. I mean, we were talking about some torque. As a matter of fact, if I change this timing here, see the reason I have it for two seconds is if you have it going to one position to zero, and then you start it before it gets to zero, you go to another position, um, it's actually going to never make it to where you told it to go. It won't go to the you know first place you told it first and then do the next command it takes in that next command and doesn't executes it immediately. So let's not give it enough time here. I'll put in a 500 millisecond delay to where it can actually make it around. And every servo is going to be different and they, they'll be faster based on uh, how much voltage you feed them to. And then you'll see if I don't give it enough time it'll go ahead and just change direction and then you can really see that torque at work. I'm telling you, this thing has some major power. If you needed some good torque for uh, a 
a robot, this would be it. Now this also leads me, I wanna show you guys, if you do have a modded servo, how that will work. It kind of appears to be the same here, but if we change the code, let's say I just tell it to go to 170. I've actually taken the potentiometer out. So, you know, the potentiometer is how the servo actually reads its position. So, this servo is trying to get to 170 and it's trying to read the potentiometer. It's never seeing 170 because there is no potentiometer, so it just continues to spin. Okay? So, if we go to zero instead of that, See the way we'll change the code up again. Okay, and you can see you could actually put some wheels on this and bolt these to a robot or whatever you'd like, and you'd have some really nice drive wheels that can go bi-directional drive wheels. They could go really slow with a lot of torque. That's why a lot of times when you see people that use these kind of servos as drive wheels, uh, they'll put like giant uh, like CD-ROM size wheels to try and compensate for the uh, amount of torque and generate a little more speed. Um, now, you can connect up to, I believe it's 12. Let me take a look here. And of course, Arduino is always a good resource for us. That's not what I want to look at. A reference. Here we go. Uh, libraries. And servo. Here we go. Servo library supports up to 12 motors on most Arduino boards. Okay. Oh look, continuous rotation servos allow the rotation of the shaft to be set to various speeds. I guess using PWM. Okay. But here you go. Here's a uh, here are the different functions we have. Attach. It's really simple. Attach, detach, uh, write, and read. And read just tells you what the last value you wrote to that survey servo was. Uh, write microseconds. Hmm. Not sure what write microseconds does. Standard servo. This will set the angle of the shaft. A thousand is fully counterclockwise. Two thousand is fully clockwise, and fifteen hundred is in the middle. Okay. Okay, so that'll be something like, uh, instead of using angular measure. Okay, cool. Alright, so that is everything about servos, guys. Next time, we're going to actually use a potentiometer um, to do an analog read to uh, go ahead and control the position of our servo horn based on the position of a potentiometer as we turn it. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.